What happened to Peter? So we've been looking at Job, and we see what didn't happen to Job. Um, plus, something happened to Peter, so let's find out what happened to Peter. And so you should be in um, Luke chapter 5. So please uh, find your way to Luke chapter number 5. And we need to know what happened to Peter. And hopefully it won't happen to any of us. I certainly hope and pray not. So we're in Luke chapter 5. And uh, oh my, Lord, we pray you'd give us what we need from your word and Please help us, Lord. Uh, we want to be found uh, upon your return, faithfully serving you, faithfully living for you, in love with you. Um, and so help us to that end, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Verse 1, and it came to pass, are you there? It came to pass that... As the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God. Um, people still press upon speakers and singers. Um, that's still happening today. But 2,000 years ago, they were pressing upon Jesus to, for the express purpose of hearing the word of God. Isn't that marvelous? Isn't that wonderful? Um, that they had such an interest, such a desire, such a high regard, place such a high priority upon hearing the word of God. I mean, um, and he, Jesus, stood by the lake of Gennesaret, so he's there where the shore meets the water, and they're pressing, thronging, you know, crowding to hear the word of God. Hmm. So verse 2, um, and saw two ships standing by the lake, But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships. And I think that's what he did because I think they were pushing him right out into the water. I mean, so, which was Simon's. So he's using someone's property. The apostrophe S denotes ownership. Um, and prayed him, he he asked Peter that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. So evidently, Simon Peter did not have an issue, did not 
take offense, did not have a problem. Um, he cooperates. He shares. He shares his time. He shares his ship. Now, you know, he's busy working. He's preparing the equipment for the next time out, but um, now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, and I think this is interesting, launch out into the deep, and he and let down your nets for a draught, you know, a catch, a catch of fish. Verse 5, And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. It's an interesting response to Jesus, don't you think? Um, I guess Simon felt like Jesus needed to hear that. And it's almost, it's almost like Simon, you know, the whole night was kind of pointless. So, um, it, and, and I'm wondering if Simon is thinking this is going to be just another exercise in futility. You know, it's almost like Simon is saying, you know, Master, they're not biting. And it's almost as if Simon really didn't, like his heart wasn't in this, like he just really didn't want to do this. Um, and I think that's what he's telling Jesus. They're not biting. Um, but nevertheless, at thy word... I will let down the net. <laughs> but some of you have seen this. Maybe some of you have not seen this. But verse 4, Jesus um, told him to let down your nets. See the S, more than one. But Simon's response and I think Simon's kind of like dragging his feet on this because Simon says, I will let down the what? Yeah. You see, there's something going on in Simon's thought process. Um, it, it, it's kind of like, I'll, I'll do this. I really don't want to do this. Um, I spent the whole night and we got skunked. And it's almost like out of politeness. Politeness, okay. All right. Uh, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. But Jesus said nets. And so what that tells me, not so much in words, but in action, Simon, Simon is not as convinced as Jesus is about this catch of fish. Um, going to be polite about it, going to do it. Um, I mean, after all, there's, the Lord only knows how many hundreds or thousands of people there looking, listening. And uh, Verse 6, and when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes. <laughs> and, and what happened to their net? Say, how about that? Jesus said nets, but we're just, I don't know, I think sometimes I think we're smarter than Jesus. Maybe we, maybe we think we, know better than Jesus. So Jesus said nets, but we decided to use a net. 
And now because the catch is so great, now the net is breaking. Verse 7, And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, Now, I don't know if the other ship was still at shore. I don't know if the other ship was beside them. I really don't. But, but anyway, wherever the other ship was, they, they, uh, they should come and help, and, and they came. And uh, this is remarkable. Look at verse 7. And, and filled both ships so that... Both ships began to do what? <laughs> I mean, we're going from being skunked to sinking. And that's, you know, wow. When, when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Simon's fishing business, Simon's ships, and so what Simon is, you know, the essence of what he's saying to Jesus is, I I'm not worthy of this. I don't deserve this. Um, I, I am a sinful man. Um, so look what Jesus does for a sinful man. And uh, here we see grace, we see mercy, we see the love of God, we see it all. And it's all being directed toward a sinful man. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the draught of the fishes which they had taken. And you know, some statistician, based upon the ships that they have been finding along the uh, seashore, the uh, sea lake of Gennesaret, Galilee, based upon the size of those fishing vessels that they've been um, unearthing, and then they, they reconstruct them. And, and so what they've done is they looked at the size of those ships, and then they've calculated two of those ships completely full to the point of almost sinking. The statisticians have calculated for these four families that would have been enough food to sustain those families for three years. Because, you know, they would dry the fish, they would salt them, you know, and that's how they make, make them last. What, what is interesting to me about that figure is how long did these men follow Jesus? Anybody know how many years did these men walk with Jesus? Three years. Kind of connect the dots here. And you, you, they've they've all got you know they've got families, wives, children. They're going to follow Jesus. Um, how how are the families going to be provided for? Well, I think God just did it. I mean, I just think that's remarkable that. You know that there are people that that can uh, work the, this equation out and, and come to all of this. I just think, wow, that's that's amazing. Um, and so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, 
which were partners with Simon's. It was a, it was a fishing business. Um, and, uh, and Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not. Hmm. From henceforth thou shalt catch men. So for Jesus to say that to Simon, fear not, that, that begs the question, what was he afraid of? Well, that's something to meditate on, isn't it? Something to ponder, something to think about. But if Jesus said to Simon, fear not, what was he afraid of? What was he fearing? And when they had brought their ships to land, and I want you, this is the point I wanted to bring you to, the, the next three words, uh, well, the next five words, is it five, three, six words. When, when they had brought their ships to land, they did what class? I mean, um, and what, what's remarkable about that is they had the equivalent of a fortune because those fish in a normal scenario would go to market. And um, they had a big catch, a big catch is big money. And uh, believe you me, um, under the tyranny of Rome, they needed the money. But um, so they looked at those two ships full to the brim of fish. And the Bible says they forsook all and followed him. Now, that speaks to a heart condition. And so, let's, um, let's go back to Matthew chapter 26. So, So really, Peter walked away from pretty good fortune there, along with his partners. Uh, they really did. They forsook it all, and they followed him, followed Jesus. Um, indicating they had a heart for Jesus. They had a desire um, And you know, he told him straight up, you know, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Um, so just think with me here, class, a little bit. So if they walked away from a, that fortune sitting in front of their eyes in those two ships, Jesus says, Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And so they forsook the fortune and they followed Jesus. What has just become more important to these men than the fortune sitting in those ships? What, what has just moved up the priority list in their lives? What? what? Well, yes. And, and, and uh, the details are there. I will make you what? Follow me, and I will make you what? Fishers of men. So this, this is uh, 
This is answering the call of God is what it is. It's answering the call of God. And, you know, I come back to fear not, right? Fear not. You know, why is Jesus undergirding these men, Peter, with this admonition to fear not? Well, what is going to be required for Peter and these other three men to walk away from everything, to forsake it? You know, the word forsake means to turn your back on something. It, what it means is you're going in a, in a, in a new direction. That's what it means. So what might Peter's fear be about as it pertains to walking away from that fortune? Who's going to pay the bills? Who's going to feed those kids? Clothe them. Protect them. I mean, this is an incredible event when you think about what's happening here. And if you think it's easy to answer God's call, you think that's no big deal? You might think again. It, it, is, it is an incredible test of your love for God as well as your faith in him. So there's a lot happening here. Um, so there's a real priority shift. It, it's, it, so having this encounter with Jesus, hearing him, and you know, they heard the messages. They heard Jesus teach the word of God. And they see... They hear the word of God. They see the work of God. And it's what they're doing is indicative of a a, a decision that they've made. And and the decision they've made, and and it's evident, is we're we're going to trust in Jesus. We're going to follow the Lord. And so they do. And you know what's interesting? Uh, we, we never read any biblical accounts of any of the members of those families starving to death or being homeless because um, Those two fishing vessels God supplied for those families for those three years. It's remarkable. It really is. It really is. Um, All right, I hope you found Matthew chapter 26. Um, Matthew chapter 26. And I, you know, as usual, I'm standing in front of the fastest clock in the valley here. Matthew 26 and verse number 72. Um, uh, Matthew 26. And let's let's begin at verse 69. Uh, You know, the, the question, what happened to Peter? Now, Peter, 69. Now, Peter sat without in the palace, and a damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also wast with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. And when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said unto them that were there, 
This fellow also was with Jesus of Nazareth. Verse 72. And again he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. And after a while came unto him they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou art one of them, for thy speech bereath thee. You know, uh, Jesus didn't talk like the world. And, you know, he impacted his disciples, his followers, and in, in such a way that they, uh, they didn't, you know, at a point no longer talk like the world either. Verse 74, then began he to do what, class? And to swear, saying, I know not the man. Now the question is, what happened to Peter? I mean, this is the same man that we just saw forsaking everything and following Jesus three years earlier, but now who says, I don't even know Jesus Christ. And um, really, this is this is what um, you know. Satan told God Job would do, but of course, we know better than that about Job. Uh, let's go to Matthew chapter sixteen, and I assure you, the devil's in the details. He's in the details of what's happening, what happened to Job, what happened to Peter, and what is happening still today. And I'm sad to say to far too many of God's children today. But in Matthew chapter 16, if you would please, uh, and uh, you know, if we can, if we can learn something from this that will. Help us to avoid doing this. We'll be the better off. Um, Matthew 16 and, and uh, verse number 21. Uh, <clears throat> so from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day, and that's the gospel, the death. Christ died for our sins. He was buried as proof that he died to pay for our sins. And on the third day, he rose again uh, as uh, evidence that he is God and that he defeated death and that he uh, did, in fact, uh, atone or pay for the sins of the world against God. In uh, verse 22, uh, now watch Peter, because the question is, what happened to Peter? And I think we have a, we have a, a window in Scripture that we can, we can uh, put together the pieces here. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Now that sounds nice on the surface, doesn't it? Oh, look at Peter. He's concerned about Jesus. Peter is being compassionate to Christ. He's, he's reaching out to Jesus and, 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 and he's loving Jesus and, he's, and, he, and he doesn't want anything 
you know, uh, bad or hurtful or harmful to happen to Jesus. I mean, what a compassionate fellow. Uh, we, I guess some might think that, but when you read more, verse 23, uh, Jesus turned, but he turned, that's Jesus, and said unto Peter. Now, this is interesting. Jesus says, get thee behind me. Whoa, wait a minute. I thought he was talking to Peter. But Jesus says, get thee behind me, Satan. So now we learn the devil is, is in the details here. Now we learn who's really behind this attempt to dissuade, to talk Jesus out of going to the cross. And of course, um, it's the devil, Satan, the, the deceiver, the destroyer, uh, the liar. Um, get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. And then, but now, you know, you see, he's saying this into the, into the face of Peter. <laughs> but, he's, but as he's speaking to Peter, he's addressing Satan. So what does that mean? He's looking at Peter, but he's addressing Satan. So how shall we understand this? What has happened to Peter? Satan got into his into his thought process, into his into his heart, his mind. Um, and Jesus knows that it, because Peter is not having thoughts that are consistent with God or with uh, with uh, Jesus. These right because. Um, from, from the heart, the mouth speaketh. And so, uh, clearly, these thoughts are coming from Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. And then, but, but now watch this. And this is to Peter. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those, again, referring to the things that be of God. Of who? What happened to Peter? In, in the space of three years of walking with Jesus, he went from forsaking all earthly riches to following Jesus for th up until this moment, this point, A life of walking by faith, living by faith, trusting the Lord. And we come to the end of that time and now something has happened in Peter's heart and, and, and his mind and you know his attitude, his, his soul, his for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. You know, then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. And see, did you catch that? What did Jesus say? If any man will come after me, let him do, let him do what? Let him deny himself. In other words, uh, wow. And take up his cross and follow me, which is what initially Peter did. He forsook all, so, so Peter transitioned three years earlier. He forsook all 
To forsake all means you're, you're doing what to yourself? Denying yourself. To forsake all means you're denying yourself. Now, Peter has, has moved from that heart, that mind. Now, he's denying Christ. Because he's no longer denying self. Peter is now living for the things that be of men. He, so he's taken his eyes off of whom and put his eyes on what? He's, he's taken his eyes off of the Lord and he has his eyes on what? The, yeah, things that be of men are things that are generated by men. Things that men make. Okay. Um, and so, you know, Jesus says, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he... Um, shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Um, what happened to Peter? See, go, go to uh, 2 Timothy 4 real quick, please. 2 Timothy 4. I just want you to see one verse, please. One verse. Um, you know, and, and look, here, here's, here's the point for the lesson tonight. If it happened to Peter, understand it's still happening today. If it happened to Peter, it's still happening today. All right, either 2 Timothy 4 and verse 10. Just verse 10, please. What happened to Demas? Look at verse 10. For Demas hath forsaken me. And why did Demas forsake God, the work of God, the word of God? Verse 10 gives you the answer. Why did Demas forsake the Lord? There's your answer. Um, having loved this present world. Look, um, the great temptation of Christ, the devil showed Jesus the what of the world? He showed Jesus all of the riches of the world. And he said to Jesus, all of this shall be thine if you will fall down and worship me. And then finally, and we've got to close, 1 John chapter 2, 1 John chapter 2. Um, we're in a battle, folks. From the moment you get saved until you go home to be with Jesus, you're in a battle. <laughs> What's the battle? The battle is for your life and how you're going to spend it. for your life and how you're going to spend it. First John 2 and verse 15, love not the world, because if you love the world, then it's impossible for you, for you, for you to love who? You cannot love the world and love God. It's one or the other, not both. Uh, love not the world, love not the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. 
Okay? We're in a battle, and it's real. And um, what happened to Peter? Tell you what, what happened to Peter. There was a point in his life where the enemy came at him. The devil is in the details. We talked about temptation Sunday. The enemy was tempting him. And he fell out of love with God. And when he fell out of love with God, he fell in love with the things of man, the world. And he denied Christ. Of course, he did repent. He did convert. He did give his life back to Christ. God used him beyond all that, but um, don't say it can't happen to you. It's happening. It's happening in mass right now, and uh, in the lives of those that profess to know Christ. It's it's happening in mass. Father, uh, I'm thankful that. You never fall out of love with us. And I'm sad that there's the ever-present prospect that we may fall out of love with you. Peter did. Demas did. Others still are. God, uh, help us, I pray, uh, moment by moment to be aware that we're in a battle. And the battle is for how we're going to live our life, how we're going to spend our life, what we're going to do with our life. And the battle is real. God, help us, I pray. Especially pray for uh, anyone listening, joining in that has never invited Jesus to come into their life, Um, living vanity, from vanity to vanity, empty, meaningless, unfulfilling, doesn't satisfy, um, you know, trying everything the world is offering. I pray, God, that they would turn to Jesus before it's too late. That they would, uh, right now, wherever they are, I pray, Father, you'd draw them to Jesus for salvation. That they would just, they would just, in a very heartfelt, sincere way, just pray, Lord Jesus, please come into my life. And that they would just ask, the Savior, to forgive them of all of their sins against God. Lord Jesus, please come into my life. Please forgive me of all of my sins. And save me. Save me from hell. God, I pray a multitude will will call upon Jesus before it's eternally too late. And then, God, I pray you'll protect Gateway Baptist Church. The enemy is after every child of God in this church to do what he did in Peter's life, what he did in Demas's life, what he tried to do in Job's life, and what he could not do in Jesus' life to tempt us to fall in love with mammon with things of the world things of man because he knows if he's successful that means we'll fall out of love with god and our lives will be spent in vanity a wasted life a meaningless purposeless life used by the world to make your children little more than debt slaves to the things of man. 
What a sad, sad story. For any child of God, God, I pray you'll protect us. Find us faithful. Find us serving you. Find us in love with you. And we believe you're coming soon. My God, help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.